Hello, we're talking about exposure, which is applicable to all cameras, but specifically a neat little function button that exists on the Fuji. And uh, you grab your Fuji, either your X Pro 2, your X T1, and um, it's in your menu settings. And if you go to shooting menu, subset number five, you will find a function that will you can turn on or off, uh, default is off, and it is marked interlock spot AE exposure and focus area. Now what this will let you do, I often, well, almost all the time, um, or at least most of the time, shoot in aperture priority. And uh, if it's a, uh, a scene that's not moving, it's not sports action, wildlife, um, I'll be spot metering. And uh, after a while, you know, you start thinking about the zone system, your mind gets into the habit of evaluating two things. What your mid-tones are in the scene that you're going to be shooting. Because a lot of things are tricky, unless you're colorblind. You know, if you look at a scene and, you know, you see something that's bright yellow or, uh, you know, some sort of odd hue, you'll never identify that as a uh, mid-tone. It's equivalent if you were to uh, uh, convert the image that you see with your eyes or you're about to capture with your camera into a, a black and gray image that you would identify a red or a yellow as a mid-tone. And uh, spot metering, which depending on the camera is about 2% coverage, um, lets you evaluate a scene so that you can make proper exposure decisions. Your camera, and there's not a single camera out there that can do it, that can properly evaluate the exposure for the scene. Well, on the Fuji, you have a, uh, a matrix setting, or they call it a multi-setting. That's what Fuji calls it. And they have an average setting. Uh, for exposure and then they have a spot meter setting so you can turn uh, your exposure dial setting to spot metering will not work also in uh, multi autofocus point mode so if you go out of single point and go to zoom or uh, wide tracking this will not work so it needs to be single point and uh, you know, need to be metering and spot metering and what I do and what I found to be a pure joy with uh, the Fuji is that I can, like for on this scene example, you can't see the back of my camera, um, if my focus point, I want it to be on this nail head, for example, I'll set a smaller intermediate to single autofocus point, but with the interlock turned on on the Fuji, the point of my focus is also the point of spot metering. As is typically the case, spot metering exists within a small section of the center part of the camera. When you turn, uh, interlock uh, exposure and autofocus together wherever the autofocus point moves that you select for the composition of your shot you move the autofocus point here here wherever you move it or whatever size however the size for the uh, spot for spot metering remains at uh, two percent it moves with your autofocus point now you're gonna say well it's typically the case that this nail for example on the shot just as an example you know is not what I want to meter for this is not my eighteen percent value it would be uh, a point like right over here. This would be an 18% gray. So typically the place that you're going to focus on is not the place that you would want to meter for. Uh, someone, uh, Caucasian skin, for example, that's uh, in the sun, you're going to have too much reflectance. And if you expose for the spot that you're focusing on someone's face with the sun beating down on their face, obviously it's too much, unless they've got a, a good tan. No. <laughs> um, but what I do is uh, I will actually use the auto exposure lock button on the rear of my camera. I find this extremely expedient manner. I will shoot in uh, aperture priority, let the camera choose the shutter speed, set the appropriate ISO, and then I will choose the spot meter location with the autofocus green uh, square that I have on my Fuji. I will lock in exposure, then I will recompose to the autofocus point that I want to capture to be in focus. But I've already locked my auto exposure in. And this is incredibly useful. I think absolutely every Fuji, there's, I would hazard to say that probably 95% of Fuji users are not using this unique feature. And I would actually encourage anybody to spend uh, an hour or two when you're out shooting with your Fuji to turn on, go on your shooting menu, okay, uh, subset number five on the X-T1, interlock spot and uh, focus area and turn it on and uh, that way uh, your autofocus square that you could move around will be directly interlocked with uh, exposure. So you need to have your camera set to single point autofocus, 
okay? Not zone, not wide tracking, spot meter, not multi, not average. So spot meter and single point. And that way, wherever you move your autofocus point, that is also the spot metering point for your scene. And like I said, since you would not want, typically, I don't know, it depends on what you're going to be shooting. Typically, it's not going to be the case that what you're going to focus on is going to be an 18% value. If this is my point of focus, it's too bright. You know, but that's what I want to focus on. So if I actually use that, then I'm going to have an issue where the picture is going to come out about four stops underexposed because I've metered and focused on a bright area. But if I set that point over a mid-tone, lock in exposure, recompose, and then fire at the point of autofocus, then everything is perfect. The main issue that I keep trying to tell people is that every camera is just a stupid POS. It doesn't matter if it's the most expensive Canon, the most expensive Sony, or the most expensive Fuji or Nikon. Every camera is a stupid piece of shit that wants to average for the mid-tones. And that's well and fine if it works out that way. And, but a camera doesn't know what the hell you want to expose for. Perfect exposure doesn't mean anything. I mean, if you add a dozen speed lights and blast the scene with light, and you've got uh, no control over uh, the rendition of your composition, then it's just an, uh, it's a pitiful robotic shot. And if you're just using ambient light like this, you know, the camera has no idea that, say, for example, I want everything over here to be black. That's my compositional choice. I want the exposure to be based upon this is an 18% gray, or this is an 18% gray. Whatever I choose to be my mid-tones, I want to spot the mid-tones, meaning spot meter it. First, you need to be able to spot it with your eyes. On this piece of wood, that, of course, is incredibly simple. I mean, anybody could see what the 18% gray is on a piece of wood like this. But you need to be able to see with your eyes, for example, on a scene like this, you know, what is the mid-tone? And people get confused. When they see colors, they don't see 18% gray. You have to be, as a photographer, and anybody will tell you this, that's a shooter, that you need to be able to translate what you see here and ignore the colors, not for the composition, but for exposure. Ignore the colors and strictly look at the tonal value. And this, for example, would be my 18% gray if the shot were rendered in black and white. And therefore, for example, I would set my interlock for exposure and focus to be the same. I would lock and lock in my exposure for my mid-tones here or whatever it is that I want to expose for. The compositional value of what I want to render is a darker shot then this light area up here um, everything else over here is going to drop down say three stops on this particular shot if I meter for this bright area of the flower right here then everything else down here compared to this shot is going to be uh, dropped by about three stops roughly looking at this shot but maybe that's my compositional choice why does everything have to be blasted with light why does everything have to be perfectly illuminated? It needs to be in focus, and you don't want to clip your highlights. Other than, there, there are a couple things that there are almost basically no exceptions for. There are some times where clipping highlights is acceptable, and it makes for a beautiful composition. But those instances are very, very few and very far between. So, other than, you know, uh, clipping my highlights and having the intended point to be out of focus, everything else is your artistic prerogative, and every camera in the world doesn't know a damn thing about what your artistic prerogative and intent is. So, you know, throw your camera, you know, take little steps. Throw your camera into uh, a spot metering, stick it in aperture priority so you have control over uh, your depth of field, and go out there and start spot metering. And this will actually, you know, if you want to take a, uh, a workshop in photography, fine. This will teach you more about photography in a shorter period of time than anything else will. Your shots will, uh, uh, you know, have about a 40% crap rate on the first day. You're like, well, maybe within the first few hours. depends on how quick you catch on. But after that, boy, you'll be able to spot immediately. You look at this, and oh, that's the 18%. You'll come to another scene, another picture that you want to take. And there's a boring shot, obviously. There's the kitty cat. Uh, folks get it. Yeah, there's the 18% gray. That's what I want to meter for. You know, I don't want to meter for this, obviously, because what happens if I meter for this? 
Everything else down here is going to drop by two, two and a half stops because I'm metering for the white. Maybe that's my intent though. Maybe I want everything over here to be black. Your camera doesn't know jack crap about that. Only you do. If I only want this part of the kitty cat to be exposed and everything else over here to fade to black, and that's my choice, and that's what I think is the most compositionally beautiful thing, your camera doesn't know how to do that. You need to be able to tell your camera what to do. Um, so if you're a Fuji shooter, that's actually a really neat feature, and that's uh, one uh, feature that I absolutely like on the Fuji, is interlocking your exposure with your autofocus point, but spot metering and single point autofocus. So anyway, thanks for watching. Catch you later.